Warning! Tube amplifiers have lethal voltages inside them. Please do not attempt to build, test, or repair these without understanding and following all safety protocols. Hey y'all! Well, I'm going to start off this video saying I'm confused. And ran into a really, I feel like, bizarro problem with this amplifier, which should have been a slam dunk. This was a well-known circuit that didn't modify. We just put it in like hundreds of other people have modified that little Maggie amp with, which obviously it's a different chassis and layout and stuff, but the circuit was the same. And I thought this will be a quick fix for this little Noob Sound 6P1 amp and seemed to fit the whole, you know, layout of the tubes, the power transformer we're dealing with. We had to change the output transformers, but there were some that, I mean, look identical to the ones that came on the amp. And I thought this was going to be super easy. And everything was going great. After the last video, if you remember, the only thing I had done was I hadn't put in the coupling caps. And I did the calculations on the dissipation of the output tube. And this transformer's got a little more voltage than the Maggie does. And so the output tubes were running it right at 12 watts, which to some people it's 100%. I've seen people say these are 12 watt tubes, some say they're 14, still seem pretty hot. And I was talking with this good friend of mine, and he was saying, because he's got one of these, or he's got a Maggie version of it, and he used a 160 or 150 ohm resistor instead of the 120, and it cooled off the output tubes a little bit. And I thought, that makes sense. So I put in the coupling cap, the little 0.1 UF guys, and then I swapped out the resistor, and put the bypass cap back on it, and ran through and checked the voltages again. And the voltage on the plate looked good, the voltage on the cathode looked good. I checked the voltage on the screen, and one channel was down about 5 or 6 volts from what it was before, which didn't make any sense. And then I checked the other channel, and it was down almost 20 volts. And I'm like, what? I didn't do anything that would have changed that voltage. And so I thought, well, I've changed the, you know, cathode resistor. So let me put the other one back in because that's what that's the only thing that I thought that I had changed. And so I put the other cathode resistor in and I didn't bother putting the bypass cap across it. And all the voltages measured great. And I'm thinking... That's weird. So, put the 150 ohm back in, measured everything, everything measured great. And I'm like, wait a minute, what, what's going on here? I put the bypass cap back across the resistor and the voltages went crazy again. And they weren't doing the same thing from channel to channel. And I'm thinking, the channels are identical. Why is one going down, the other one's not? And what does the bypass cap have to do with the screen voltage? And so then I started just trying to figure out what was going on. So I pulled out the driver tubes, powered the amp up. All the voltages are perfect again. And we're talking like it went from 155 volts on the screen down to 130 volts, which is 25 volts. And it's like, that's not right. Why is it doing that? So, and I don't know what made me think of doing this, but I started checking like AC voltages on the, you know, like the different parts of the amp. And there was 130 volts AC on the plate of the output tube when I had the driver tubes in and everything all connected. It's like, there's not supposed to be any AC there. And then I... For whatever reason, I thought about turning the volume control. And when I turned the volume control down to zero, the AC volts on the plate went to zero. And when I got up to about half volume, when I got up to like a third volume, the one channel, 
the AC volts jumped up on the plate, and then when I got up to like half volume, the other plate jumped up to like 130 volts too. And so then they both were dragging down the screen voltage or the plate voltage on the driver tubes. And I know this is kind of technical, but you know, and you guys that are just wanting to build this amp, you know, don't do anything right now because this is a bad problem that I got to try to figure out. And so anyway, then I decided to hook a speaker up instead of the dummy load to the output. And yeah, I heard like some weird squealing kind of noises on one channel when I turned the volume up about halfway. And there's nothing connected on the inputs. It's like there's no signal going in. So there shouldn't be any noise. There shouldn't be any like voltage on the or AC voltage on the plate, which is like a signal. So then I got another meter out that has the measurement for the frequency of the AC. And there was a 32K signal on the plate of the output tube with the driver tubes in place. So something's making the amp oscillate. And at this point, it's an open loop. There shouldn't be anything that's making the amp unstable. And it's tied to the volume control. If I turn it down and ground the grid of the input tube, the problem stops. And so I've spent a couple of days just looking at the schematic and trying to figure out like where this loop is. And if I disconnect the coupling cap, problem goes away. So it's something happening with the input tube is feeding a signal or getting in a loop with the output tube. And I'll admit, I've never messed with a pentoed amp. I mean, I've done ultralinear and that kind of stuff, but I've never done like just like DC power to the screen of a pento tube. So then I'm thinking, okay, somehow the input tube's oscillating. And let me try triode strapping the output tube. And if it's still oscillating, then I know it's something with the driver tube or these driver tubes. And I thought maybe it's a bad tube, which I don't know, it could be. But I've only got one pair of these tubes. And the idea that both of these tubes are bad and they're doing the same thing is highly unlikely. And another thing that was happening was when the amp was oscillating, which was the majority of it was like at 30K 30 or 32K hertz, which is outside of our hearing range. You could also hear like a 60 or 120 hertz hum in the speaker that was barely loud. But when I would pull out the coupling cap, that hum would go away too. And I don't know if it's just like stressing out the driver tubes to the point where it's making the cathode pick up the AC heater noise. I don't know. Never run into anything like this. This is like just bizarro world. And I went through the schematic with, again, this good friend of mine that has one of these amps, and he was looking at his. We were looking at the schematic, and he double-checked all the wiring and stuff, and he didn't see anything obvious that I'd done wrong. I went through it on camera and was showing you guys, like, here's the screen, here's the grid, here's the, you know. And I know that I've hooked all this stuff up right, but maybe I did something stupid, and I'm just not seeing it. I don't know. So anyway, the other weird thing was when I triode strapped the output tube, the noise went away, or the oscillation went away. And then I ran it on my laptop with the audio analyzer suite, and it performed fairly okay. I mean, it has more distortion than I'd like to see, which I don't know what that's about either. But it, you know, made a clean pull, made just under two watts of power, which is what I would expect on a triode strapped EL84. And so with a triode strap that works. And I feel like that if it was like some wire was in the wrong place, it wouldn't work triode strapped either. So 
one of the things I tried as well is I only was measuring like 0.2 milliamps of current going through the driver tube, which seemed a little low. So I lowered the plate load resistor to 300K and then that little voltage booster to the cathode from 150K to 240K and that brought the cathode voltage down to 1.2 volts and got like 0.4 mils running across the tube now which kind of look at the data sheet and stuff seems more normal that didn't have any impact on it and I'm just scratching my head and so this friend of mine Mark lives up in Pennsylvania we spent a couple hours on the phone you know just help, you know he was kind of helping me show, you know Try this, disconnect that, hook this up, try disconnecting the volume pot, see if that's, you know, what's causing it. You know, take out the, the little one meg resistor that you put on the grid of the input tube, see if that's got it. you know, none of this stuff was changing anything. And so he's agreed, uh, you know, I lost sleep last night thinking about this, trying to just kind of toss it and turn and go, what is going on? This doesn't make any sense. And he agreed that this doesn't make any sense. But this morning, he texted me and said, why don't you just ship the amp up to me and let me put a second set of eyes on it. So yeah, I'm going to box this thing up, send it up to Mark, and let him put a second set of eyes on it and see if he sees something or can figure out what's going on. We both think at this point that it may be something to do with just like how all those parts are laid out in a line on that, you know, turret strip kind of tag strip thing that they do on this amp. And that possibly there's some kind of capacitance coupling with the parts being laid out that way or something that's causing it to oscillate. But before I get the amp and rewire it and everything, which would make it a lot more difficult for you guys to do this mod because as you saw, it laid out really nice on that strip. And I don't see a huge problem there, but I wouldn't build the amp this way if I was building it. I would put tag strips by the tubes and have short wires or short connections to all the different parts. And this has got fairly long wires going between different parts. And maybe that's what's causing this. I don't know. The other thing, he's got a bunch of different 6SF5s that he could put in it. And sorry about last time when I called it a 6FS5. I could, yeah, or I put that on a piece of paper, but it's a 6SF5. And because we were at one point talking about swapping these out for a 6SQ7 and see if that fixed it, because that's the other thing that's different is we're not using a 12AX7. We're using this old 8-pin octal single triode tubes. But looking at the data sheet, they should work. And it doesn't make sense that they wouldn't. And so, at this point, I feel like letting a second person take a look at this and see if they can figure out what's causing this. Or maybe, like I said, maybe I did something stupid. You know, I'm human and I'm not an engineer. I'm a hobbyist. I do this for fun. And this is like, yeah, I don't get this at all. And I'll be the first to admit that this has got me totally baffled. And so, yeah, I kind of feel bad. I'm like 0 for 2 this year on, you know, that 6C33C kind of kicked my butt. Now this thing has. And up till now, maybe I've just been lucky. I don't know. But yeah. Anyway, that's where we are with this stupid little amp. And yeah, it's fought me from the day that I bought this thing. And I was able to do a, kind of a basic mod on it. It was actually the first thing I did on the channel that helped a little bit, but there's always been something about this amp that just felt like it couldn't get over the speed bump. And maybe what I've run into now has amplified the actual problem with this amp that's always held it back. And it may need to be just totally gutted. So I guess the moral of this story is it's good to have friends that can double check and put a second eyes on problems that you have and kind of learn that throughout my whole life, whether it was when I was in the automotive business or 
other things that I've worked on in my life that it's nice to have someone that you can kind of bounce things off of and I really appreciate him offering to take a look at this and luckily it's a pretty small amp that's going to be pretty cheap to ship so hopefully it'll be a learning experience for all of us and obviously we're going to figure this thing out I'm not going to brush an amp too haven't given up I just had to kind of put that to the side for a while and this thing needs a second set of eyes put on it because I'm at kind of the end of my rope or my skill set or understanding or there's something going on here that I just don't get and I feel like if I didn't have him I maybe would just gut this thing and maybe try using 6SQ7 tubes instead of these because I've used those before and had good luck with them and you know hey it is what it is and Dolly's not embarrassed. I'm not going to be either. It just, it is what it is. And I want to be honest with you guys about what's going on. I mean, I could easily just kind of say, hey, I got busy or something happened and ship this thing off and let somebody else fix it and come back and go, yeah, I figured out, you know, I'm not going to do that. This is, you know, I want to be upfront honest about what we're doing here at this channel. So anyway, that's kind of where we're at with this mess. And I... Really just hope this was going to be a slam dunk, easy kind of thing. But of course, it's not going to be. So anyway, for you guys that have one of these, that have been watching this, following along, I know somebody in the comments was saying, oh, I'm already buying parts and stuff. Just stop, guys. Don't, don't ever start on any of my projects until I get to the end. Because nothing's a guarantee until the thing's hooked up and performing like it's supposed to. So, we are going to get to the bottom of this, and again, thanks Mark for agreeing to put a second set of eyes on this, and I'll report back soon on what I find, and I hope you're enjoying this content and my journey into tube audio and sharing it with you guys. If you do, please subscribe, please like the video, thanks to all you Patreon supporters and other folks that help support the channel, and yeah, if you get some ideas, put them in the comments. You know, maybe, you know, some stuff from Mark or me to look at that you think might be causing this 32K oscillation on this amp with this schematic. And until the next video, have a nice day. <laughs>